The Duelist Kingdom tournament was a once in a lifetime opportunity. A competition where the best and brightest duelists across Japan competed for the title of King of Games. Along with a cash prize of 3 million yen. Why is that converted again? Hey Siri, what's 3 million yen in dollars? 3 million Japanese yen is 26,509 US dollars and 26 cents. If we take that, and we apply inflation. The tournament took place in around 2006. And inflation, you carry the one. You that cash prize today would probably be worth about $50,000. Honestly, that's a lot of money. But for a guy that owns an island, a castle, and has a monopoly on the entire Yu-Gi-Oh trading card game, you'd think you would have splurged a little bit more on that prize. However, to be fair, the dub did change the price to $3 million instead, which is obviously amazing, but it does create another big problem. Joey really wanted to win the prize money to pay for his sister's eye operation, and the entire prize was the cost to pay it. $50,000? makes sense for an eye operation. Three million dollars? What was she having done? Was she getting the Sharingan implanted into her eyes or something? Anyway, getting back on track, Yugi was forced to enter this tournament after Pegasus had stolen his grandfather's soul. In order to get him back, he would have to win the whole thing. And while Yugi seemed to know more or less exactly how the rules worked in this tournament, for us at home, it almost seemed as if they were simply making it up as they went along. And to a degree, there is some truth to that. How about we answer that question? What are the official rules for the Duelist Kingdom tournament? Before we start, I'm sure there's something you're all very curious of. A bunch of Duelists going to a remote island, how did they keep their cards safe when they were there? Well, they kept their cards safe in today's sponsor, the Exeter Wallet. Did you think I meant Duel Monsters cards? No, I meant their debit and credit cards. Exeter is a high quality, ultra thin wallet that keeps things minimal so that you don't have a giant bulge protruding out of your jeans. That sounded wrong, let me try that again. You know what's scary? Thieves. And do you know what thieves can do nowadays? They can scan your debit and credit cards through your pockets to steal your hard earned money. However, this is where the extra wallet comes in. It is made from a material that blocks RFID scanners and prevents wireless theft. On top of this, when I want to use one of my cards, I can do so at the touch of a button, which awesomely fans them out for me to choose from. And when I want to put them back, it's just as easy. Extra also offers tracker cards, which you can pair to your phone so that if you lose your wallet, you can know exactly where it is. It can even call out for help. Symbiotically as well, if you lose your phone but have your wallet, you can call your phone from your wallet to find it. And right now, if you use my link down in the description, you can get an insane discount off your extra purchases. Treat yourself today using the link in the description and keep your money safe. The tournament was invite only. 40 duelists were invited. Each duelist invited was sent a welcome pack, consisting of five cards and two star chips. Those five cards given out were given out to give details of the tournament. For instance, the ship card gave information on when and where they would need to meet to enter. The island card told them that the tournament would take place on Pegasus's private island in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. The duelist glove card told them about what the starships were for and allowed them to receive a duel gauntlet for them to keep their starships safe as they dueled. Finally, the Glory of the King's Hand and Glory of the King's Opposite Hand cards were used as the prize cards. The holder of the Glory of the King's Hand card would allow the winner to claim the $50,000 prize money and nothing more or less. Whereas the glory of the king's opposite hand allows the winner to have one more duel and this was against Maximilian Pegasus himself. If you were able to beat him in a duel, not only would you earn the title of King of Games, you would also receive anything you desired. However, of course, such a great prize requires a great risk, as if you lose this duel, you lose your soul.
The two starships would serve as one, proof of entry to the tournament, and two, the actual currency within the tournament. You would be gambling these, and this would determine if you moved on to the next round. The reason for this was because starships must be wagered in every duel, with the winner taking all. A duelist with 10 starships qualifies for the finals of the tournament. Those who lost all of their starships or had below 10 at the end of the allotted time would be eliminated. However, with 40 duelists and 80 starships in the mix, this meant that there was a potential to have eight finalists. And this was something that Pegasus didn't want to happen. Pegasus only wanted four to qualify, so he hired four eliminators to retrieve the extra 40 starships. In the end, those that made it to the finals would then face off in a mini playoff style tournament. Round one of the tournaments would have a time limit of 48 hours and would be structured as a battle royale. The way it worked was they just set all of the duelists loose on the island, give them a couple of minutes to get ready, and then you could just battle to your heart's content. You can ambush people if you want, duel them there, lead them to places, do whatever you want. You've got the whole island, but you've only got 48 hours. So that's everything you need to know about the tournament itself. What about the in-duel rules? Let's take a look. A duelist deck must contain 40 cards exactly. No side decking is allowed. On top of that, any additional cards players brought to the island were confiscated. So they had their 40 card deck, anything extra they had was taken away from them. Bandit Keith, of course, snuck onto the island and was a known cheater. And this is why he had so many extra cards with him as he'd snuck them on and gave them all to Bones. However, winning a card from an opponent and using that in your deck is allowed. For example, Joey beat Rex, took his Red Eyes Black Dragon. So what Joey did was take one card out of his deck, put Red Eyes Black Dragon in there. He's got a 40 card deck again, everything's good. Now, some of you might have a problem with this ruling because later on in the tournament, Yuki is gonna have the perfect card to defeat Joey Wheeler. And it almost seems as if he's side decked it in. The card, of course, I'm talking about is Dark Sage that can only be summoned by being aged by Time Wizard. However, we'll cover that a little bit later, don't worry. Each duelist begins the duel with 2,000 life points and six cards in their hand. If a player's life points are reduced to zero, they lose the duel. You can only summon one monster per turn. Monsters summoned must be in either face-up attack, face-up defense, or face-down defense. You can flip a set monster up into either face-up attack or face-up defense. Tribute summoning is not an established mechanic. So that means high level monsters can be summoned without any sacrifices at all. Blue Eyes White Dragon, eight star monster, who needs sacrifices? Just normal summon that straight to the field. A simpler time, if a player does not control a monster and is also unable to summon a monster before the end of their turn, then they automatically lose the duel. Each player can only attack once per turn. Neither player can attack opponents directly. Yes, you heard that right. With only one attack per turn and no direct attacks. If you really wanted to, you could stall the heck out of your opponent. Just summon a monster into defense, your opponent attacks. They could have five monsters on the board, but they can only attack with one of them. So you can keep stalling with just one monster on the field. However, of course, you could be wasting a lot of monsters doing this. And if you just can't summon a monster, well, you're gonna lose. If a monster is destroyed by the effect of a card, then the monster's controller is dealt damage equal to half the attack of the monster destroyed. The best example of this is probably Mirror Force. Yugi uses this against Weevil and half of the attack of all of the monsters is dealt to Weevil. And again, against Mako Tsunami, he wipes the entire field and half of that damage is dealt to Mako, which completely wipes out his life points. A monster that is treated as an equip card is still treated as a monster, meaning that monster can also be used as a cost, for example for a ritual monster summon. All spell cards are treated as quick play spell cards. Yes, basically all spell cards in Duelist Kingdom are normal spells and all of them are treated as if they're quick play spells. Quick play spells don't exist in Duelist Kingdom yet, but their mechanics are just like it, so it's a quick play spell, basically. Fusion monsters and monsters transformed do not have physical cards. Instead, you keep the materials on the field 
and the game will render their fused or transformed form straight onto the field. If you don't quite understand what I mean, if you look back at Duelist Kingdom, you will never see the fusion card of a fusion monster. Or for example, if a card is transformed into something else through some sort of effect, there isn't a card form of that. It would be safe to assume that there's a long list of fusion cards that you can make, and as long as you know what two monsters can be fused together, you've basically got an unlimited extra deck size, uh, as long as you have all the fusion materials materials in your deck. So to clarify what I said earlier, Yugi having Dark Sage, well it was never in his deck to begin with. It is a transformed card, something that exists outside of his main deck. Obviously, Yugi was the original owner of Time Wizard, so if he ever had Time Wizard on the field and Dark Magician and failed, his Dark Magician would evolve into Dark Sage. So naturally he knows if he's playing against Joey and Time Wizard uses its ability on him, he can transform his monster into its new state. Ritual monsters are kept outside of your main deck. Yes, you heard me right. Ritual monsters, they aren't in your main deck. You keep them in kind of like an extra deck in your pocket or something like that. All you need is the ritual spell card. You activate the ritual spell and you can summon the ritual monster from outside of your deck. Fusion and ritual materials must be on the field to be summoned. Meaning you can't activate polymerization or a ritual spell card with the materials in your hand. They have to be on the field. Traps are triggered when the activation requirement is met. Not a rule, but a fun fact. Continuous trap cards are super rare in Duelist Kingdom. Look at how Mai talks about her mirror wall trap card. This is a big one, but duels in Duelist Kingdom take place on special dueling arenas. Each dueling arena is made up of different attribute environments. These environments come in ocean, land, meadow, wilderness, graveyard, mountain, forest, desert, and night. A monster of a corresponding attribute summoned to one of these zones will receive a field power bonus that would increase its attack and defense by 30%. If a monster boosted by a field power bonus attacks or is attacked by a monster that's attack has been increased by the effect of a spell or trap and not by a field power bonus, then that boost is not applied during battle. What do I mean by this? That sounded really confusing, I know. The best example, Yugi boosts his feral imp's attack by using Horn of the Unicorn. He attacks, but since Weevil's monster's attack was boosted by the field power bonus, then Weevil's monster's attack points take priority. And so, Feral Imp is destroyed and Yugi takes damage as if Feral Imp had no equip spell on it at all. Why did they do this? I I don't know. I don't really like this. I completely forgot about it when I was re-watching it. The only thing that I can think of is that Pegasus wanted to emphasize the field power bonuses. This was like the gimmick of the this part of the tournament. Weevil says you have to rely on either your monster's innate abilities or the field power bonuses to win. So yeah, there you go. Adding to this, there are also terrain and type advantages. Think of this as something akin to the Pokemon games. For example, a winged beast monster who attacks a monster on the ground who is boosted by a field power bonus will lose the field power bonus because the monster in the sky can fly and the monster on the ground can't. Right. Or like, if you get a monster wet, then of course, if your monster has electric abilities, you'll get a bonus in attack points from that, right? Because it conducts more electricity. Yeah? Or, like, you use an ability that burns away grass, so they're gonna lose the field power bonus, because you use the fiery ability to, like, singe the grass. Basically, what I'm leading to is the final rule of the Duelist Kingdom Tournament. And that is, all cards have the potential to do something unique if it makes rational sense. Some of you are going to hate that, but yes. Duel Monsters in the Duelist Kingdom Tournament is basically a collaboration with Dungeons & Dragons. You have the card game of Duel Monsters merged together with the mechanics of Dungeons & Dragons. What this means is, whatever's happening on the field, if you can make sense of it and justify basically what is happening, you can kind of get away with anything. For instance, the water field. Logically, water monsters would be able to swim underwater. So it's not hard to believe that they would be able to hide themselves under the water, and this would cause their attack and defense points to be obscured. So that would mean Yugi wouldn't know what he was attacking, 
and so he could attack blindly into a monster and it could have more attack. And that makes sense, right? Or like Giant Soldier of Stone. It's made of earth. So let's say it moved into the sea, then I guess it could be used as a piece of land to play another monster on. This was what Mako Tsunami thought Yugi's original plan was. To summon Giant Soldier of Stone, make it move into the ocean, and then he would have two platforms so we can summon two monsters. However, that's not what Yugi did. You see, he played a spell card called Full Moon, which of course, as we all know, the moon controls the tides of the sea. So by that logic, if I attacked the moon and destroyed it, then the tide would go all the way out and all those fishy monsters would be exposed so I can attack them. Right? That makes sense. Or like if I destroyed flotation rings on a castle and then a card is played that encases all the monsters inside, that means that they can't get away now that castle is starting to fall. Logically, if they're all underneath it, and it's got spikes at the bottom of the card, it would crush them all and kill them all. That makes sense. Or how about if I combine a card like Living Arrow with Polymerization, and then I fuse a dying undead monster with a living monster? Well, that living monster wouldn't like to have a dying monster merged into it. So logically, it would slowly start to decay, just like flesh. That makes sense, I can get away with that. Or maybe Shadow of Eyes doesn't work on female monsters. Or maybe if we multiply a Karibo, there would be so many of it, a monster like Thousand Eyes Restrict wouldn't be able to absorb them all and would probably go blind if it tried to absorb them all. At the end of the day, just ask yourself, if I was in a D&D &D campaign and I said what I wanted to do and the Dungeon Master rolls his eyes and says, all right, just roll a D20 and you roll a critical 20, he's gonna be like, yeah. Yeah, go on then, why not? It's basically what Yugi's doing here. Everything he does, he's rolling a d20. He's getting a critical hit. And with that, I'm sorry I can't be more specific with this part of the rules, but basically, those are the rules of the Duelist Kingdom Tournament. I'm sorry they were a little bit vague at the end. One thing I want you to all keep in mind, the duel between Yugi and Kaiba, uh, where Kaiba threatens to throw himself off the side of the castle, that doesn't count as part of this because they're using those prototype duel discs. They have like a different sort of dueling setup there. So don't consider that if it contradicts anything that we've talked about today. Just think of all the others. But yeah, that was the true rules of Duelist Kingdom done. Let me know if there's anything that I missed out. Equally, let me know if there's anything that I got wrong in this video. Uh, if there's anything else, I will add them as a, like a pinned comment or something like that so we can update this. Uh, that would be really cool. But uh, yeah, guys, thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Catch you later. Bye, everyone.